Greetings all, it's the Devious Monkey here. Okay, awfully disappointed in the whole video yesterday, but it was too late for me to go in and fix it. What am I talking about? The horrible glaring difference between the two cameras. So I have spent all morning playing with the a7 IV and the ZV-1 and my lighting to try to match what these damn pictures look like. So what I did was I went to the a7 IV. I took it off of S Cinetone and I put it to the creative style of NT, which I think is just neutral. And then I went into the ZV-1 and I changed it to standard. And I added another one of these apertures on this little rolling dolly thing, Pico dolly actually, and I put it onto a magical arm, a small rig magical arm, and I have that now sitting down here about 45 degrees away from me so that it's lighting up this side of my face. Now I just have to be mindful of when I'm muppeting around how it, how it alters the, the reflections on my face. Not going to get away from that because I'm just, ah! All that being said, when I'm looking at this right here and I'm looking at that right here, the biggest problem was that on the ZV-1, it was almost... I don't want to say giving me a washed out look, but it didn't have as warm of a tone to it compared to the a7 IV. Now, when I had it on that S Cinetone, I was incredibly warm. When I put it onto the standard profile to match the standard profile on the ZV, have I been saying ZV-1? The ZV-E10, then it actually was still warmer, even though they were both in standard. So that's why I put the a7 IV into neutral and left the ZV-E10 in neutral and added the light. And I think that's sort of m kind of fixing everything, at least as best as I can get it. The other thing is that last night I was shooting late at night. Well, not late at night, but it was night. So there was no light spilling in from the window over here like it is now because it's 1135. So I'm getting that morning sun coming through here. Now I put the blind over the window to try to block out some of that sunlight. And, you know, as I, again, as I'm looking at it, it's all fixed. Now I'm gonna tell you my settings. Again, 150th, 24 frames per second. This one is also in 4K 10-bit. This one's 4K 8-bit because it doesn't shoot 10-bit unless I do it externally, and I'm not doing that. So that aside, now I have the A7 IV on F8 ISO 6400. Again, the neutral creative look, no picture profile. On the ZV-E10, I have it on F5.6, ISO 3200. Creative look is standard, no picture profile. So I got rid of the fake S Cinetone. And again, according to the dinky ass little screens that I can see, it looks like it's much better matched. Now, I have my background lights on, so my other apertures, like you can, one there, one there, and then I got the melon light on behind me. I think that's about as close as I'm gonna be able to get it. I do have my falconized light on over here, which you can see is getting me on this side, but I was really lacking on light on this side because all I was getting was the spill from this background light down below me. That's why I added this Aperture MC over here on this side. Now what I've done is I've matched it in heat, whatever, to Kelvin. I made it 5600 and I turned it up to 25%. Now you can see there's a lot more light on me on this side, and if I cover it, look at what it does. I mean, it makes a huge difference. So we're gonna see how that works out. The other thing that I have not done is I have not, let me blank out my computer screen. There, I've just taken the monitor out of the picture other than the screensaver, which is gonna roll around, so it might change the lighting a little bit, but watch what happens when I, look at how much more light that gave me on both of these, it really made a huge difference. So it makes, a, it makes a difference with all the light that you have coming in. I also have the TV on the other side of the room going. That right now is aliens. So there's a lot of blue light, it's very dark, but there's also a lot of flashes and stuff from gunfire and all that shit. So everything makes a big difference. And I'm interested to see what this looks, see see how much shadow I get there when I put my hands up like that. You don't get that on this camera, but you get it on that one. So I may have to just sit on my hands and, and kind of do that, um, what was it, Baylock on Star Trek, you know, we will come and kill you. 
All right, sorry about that, geek, geek mode. This is all the stuff that you have to think about when you're filming yourself and you're filming yourself and you're a one-man show. You have to think about a thousand different things. How's that camera set? How's that camera set? How's that light set? How's that light set? Is it angled the right way? Is it angled too much? Is it reflecting off of this? Is it reflecting off that? I was big on having very dead lines of symmetry and dead broke barbecue was like, dude, I get it. You like the symmetry and stuff, but maybe sort of offset it and make it look a little bit different. I have relented and I have done this differently where I have this chalkboard vertical, the pegboard horizontal. I've put you know, doink behind me, but sort of to the side. And then I put these off at a little length and then I have my cameras over here, but then I put that thing so that it's not directly behind me. It's sort of off a little bit. So you can see it on the ZV-1 perfectly, but you can't see it now because my melon's blocking it. I also lifted my chair up all the way. So there's all these little things that I'm having to think about. And then of course, like, oh shit, well, I've got the computer monitor on that's adding a lot of light. I'm also now taking the monitor away, but it has a screensaver on it. So the lights are, are rolling all around it and making a big difference. Now my hands are up and I'm going like this and I'm getting, you know, harsh shadows from when I swing it because now I've got this little light over here. And if I cover it up, it changes everything. And I put it back on and oh my God. So I've got a lot more warm tone to me here now on the ZVE10. Now that I've added the other light and everything compared to what I see on the screen for the a7 IV. So have I really made it look better or worse now that I've changed the a7 IV to neutral, but left this on standard. And because I'm sitting here looking at the screens, I haven't looked into the lens really all that much. And that's annoying too. So see all the things that you have to think about as a creator. That's why when you're posting stuff, you can tell when I have the time to do things right. Last night, I didn't. You should have seen it before I went in and tried to fix it with the color, you know, with, with Final Cut Pro and everything. It was so different that I wanted to completely just not show the ZVE-10's angle, but then it wouldn't have made sense because I was sitting there saying, so now I'm looking into this camera and now I'm looking to here and this is what, you know, so it was going back and forth and it would have just been stupid. And then I would have had to have ditched the video and started all over again and I wasn't going to. Since this channel is about figuring all this shit out and bringing you along with me, I decided to just cringe and bear it by leaving both sets of footage in there and kind of playing with the ZVE-10s a little bit. Because again, if I hadn't played with it, it would have been a, like a hundred times worse. So now I'm not going to alter anything. I'm going to leave this the way that it is. I am starting to see that, that there is definitely more warm tones now on the ZVE-10 compared to what they were yesterday. And I had to jack that setting up to like 65% to get color to come back to me enough so that it didn't look as awful as it did before I did that. And then I had to turn up the brightness as well because I wasn't, I, I clearly didn't have enough light. So for now, I got packages to go pick up and I've got some day job shit that I got to get done. I just was like, all right, I want to play with this now. I want to, I want to get this done. I am going to reset the, a7 IV back to standard instead of neutral. Now that it looks like I've got a lot more color on here and I can't go by these screens because I've told you before, they're like carnival screens and, and what you see is not really what is going on. So when I get it onto the computer, I'll know for sure. So for now, let's go pick up some packages. Okay, kids, here's something different. Haven't seen this in a while, huh? Right now, because earlier today, I finally got the RS the Insta360 RS Core that I that I ordered. So I put it all back together today. So right now I have the Insta360 RS Core, which is brand new. I put on my Leica one inch sensor module. I got the new battery and I put it in the new case and I charged it earlier whilst I was doing other shit. And then I went through and I got all the settings and everything done and back to where I want them to be. So I'm shooting in 4K 24, uh, the flow state's on, uh, the sharpness is down to medium, uh, you know, things like that. I went through and sort of picked all the shit that I wanted to change. The one thing that I don't have is a decent sized micro SD card, but I'm going to Best Buy after I go to the chiropractor, which is where I'm going now, to get a 256 uh, gig card. And then that will give me more than enough to film the way that I normally film. Now I can add this back into the mix. So I'm pretty set for cameras right now. <laughs> yeah. 
We all know what that means. So that's it. You kind of got the lay of the land. I have uh, tweaked the studio setup. I have tweaked the camera setups. I have gotten my Insta360 ONE RS back and have tweaked that. And I think I'm good to go there. So now there's no shortage of cameras for me to use at multiple angles and different situations and blah, blah, blah. Everything is looking good for the monkey. So that means things are going to be looking better for yo. And I'm sorry about the shit footage yesterday. I don't know what the hell happened there. I almost got to a point where I thought I left the ND filter on the, the ZVE-10 because the footage looks so horrible. But whatever. There's been a reset. I think everything should be just fine. So I'm just going to cut it short now. Well, it's probably not going to be cut short. It's probably going to be just as long as it ever is. But I'm just going to stop blathering on now. How about that? So... That's it. That's all you get for today. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, leave them down below. As always, thanks for joining me. Be sure to like and subscribe. And remember, kids, forward and up.